to me, I think making a record boils down to the synergy you have between whether it be a, a band and a label, a band and a manager, a band and a producer, writers, whatever. But I think it's coming together and learning how to communicate in one common language and express what you're trying to get out. That to me is what a record is. That's what we grew up listening to and that's what connects us to music. That's my take. Hold your breath. We're going under. Hold your breath. It's lightning. It's thunder. Hold your breath. Nashville, Tennessee. Music City, USA. What, what, what did you want me to say? Uh, <laughs> just, just talk about the, the studio and everything uh, for stay uh, here. Oh, yes. It is April 15th, and we've been in Nashville over the weekend. Did some writing sessions and hanging out, and we're on our way to Springfield, Tennessee, to start... Record number four. So here we are at, um, at uh, Jason Rouse's studio. This is day one. We're in the studio here. We're just talking about, uh, talking through, we've talked through the first song and decided what we needed to work on, what was good, and now we're just uh, jumping in. We're gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Everything I have is because of you. Because of you is a tune that the band, uh, Brought in from a couple days of a co write. Or we could use that for a bridge. Or for a uh, something. It's kind of a nice climb. It is a nice climb. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Sounds like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Official just co write with someone? The first one's perfect, the second yeah. one's where it gets a little second bit. Second one, weird. I was trying to decide what to yeah, do. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh. Go, I need some chips. Uh, oh, do you want to use these ones? Well, I don't. How about these ones? The, these have a nicer shape. A uh, shape? Yeah, the way that the headphones see that they fit real nice, they're real round and they fit and they twist like this and will feel better on my head than those. But dude, these are really rad. Like, it's, it'll cancel out all the bleed and so the shape. But do they have a nice shape? These. I don't know what you mean by shape. These are the ones that I want to use. But it's for your ear, like, just to record. Yeah, but these ones have a better shape, so it'll help me to sing better. We shifted around the tempo a little bit, shifted around the, I don't think we changed keys, but moved the drums around a little bit, put a little bit more drive to it, and tried to pull out this kind of anthemic kind of piece to it. And, uh, yeah, I think it turned out. Turn out pretty well. Just tracking a little bits. In my journey through the earth, I found myself a winter night. Really stoked about how this one uh, came together. The initial batch of tracks that I that I had been sent, there were two different versions of them. One was pretty stripped and mechanic, and another one was more featuring the band, it had different lyrics, some melody change. There was two versions of the song. It was actually, uh, there was a full band song called Drive, and the, the lyrics on Come In, Come In were the original lyrics for this song called Drive, but it just never felt right. I just always... And uh, I never do rewrites, which is terrible. I'm a terrible songwriter. My technique is... But this one was one where, like, all right, I'm just going to wipe it all off and start on a clean slate. So I wrote all new lyrics for this song called Drive. And then later on, I started uh, just to jam, just kind of by myself, the original lyrics, just kind of as a reprise. Well, long story short, the reprise made the cut, Drive didn't. Both of them really offered pretty independent things to the record, but cumulatively they, they packaged something really cool and had this little reprise element to it. So you kind of introduce it, an idea and later on, maybe you reintroduce it, but change a little bit and complete the thought. And so I, I think that that's one of the ideas on the record that ended up well in that regard, and the fact that we, we were able to take both of those elements and combine them into the the, the single track.
Bethlehem is a very cool tune. Um, initially, it was done by The Wedding. It's a song that they had kind of prepared and written for um, a project that that they had done. It was always a, a tune that we uh, we loved. We, we, we toured with them and they would play this song live. It was so much power. Uh, I, I can remember, I think it was maybe at Cornerstone the first time um, on one of the encore stages that they um, we were watching the wedding and they announced they were gonna play this new song and and I just I just can remember hearing this song and just like whoa for, for whatever reason it never made it on any of their records it would be a challenge I think for any band and I think the children and the guys are one of the few select groups I think I count on one hand that could probably pull a song like that off of Lee Marie absolutely killed it I mean she got in there and owned it I tried to turn on my Matt Shelton and we'll just you can just decide what, what you think about that, but uh, it was it was an intimidating thing to to attempt, but so much fun. It's, it was a privilege to record that song. I'm actually looking forward to hear the wedding guys hearing that that song because I think it offers something. And obviously, um, the band's been playing it live for a while, and so so it's pretty cool. I'm glad that we were able to to record that. It's had its opportunities before, but I think this might have been the right one. We're at the uh, it's drum day here at Children of Team 3 record number four. We're at the Brown Owl Studio. It's B-O for short, uh, which does not bode well for us, but um, it's gonna be drum day. It's gonna be awesome. Um, this is our producer, uh, Mr. Rao, he, with the backpack and sunglasses. He's uh, right checking his Facebook. He's a big Facebook guy. <laughs> Tell us, Seth, how do you feel 29th. We're here at uh, Brown Owl Studios in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're doing drums. B.O. Studios. <laughs> uh, so this room sounds great. Never, I don't think I've ever recorded in a room that sounds this good. But, so we've just been sitting up all day, getting tones, uh, playing my MBW kit, DW Bronze snare, and this side snare. It's a 20-ply maple that I made. Um, just an assortment of cymbals. Get an acker out. It's, it's, it's more of a, a groove Oof. than it is a rock beat. More of a, a groove. Yeah. So, uh, is that on? The light's not on. It's on. Yeah. First thing I noticed as I walked into the drum studio today was the familiar aroma that brings terrible feelings to my stomach and <laughs> pains to my head. And, uh, I quickly started looking around for the source of the sickening smell that uh, kind of brings me back to recording our first like record in a real studio. But ever since then, we've had pretty good luck with no incense in studios until today. We're tracking drums here, and he's our homie. He's gonna help Seth track drums. drum day going it's good we're almost done we had two days to do it finished at one done with drums done with drums now we're just cleaning up we had some caffeine we had two days scheduled but seth did it in one <clears throat> big surprise oh, there <laughs> kind of my response to doing it in go one back day. to the hop yeah for sure i mean we how many stairs are we up against let's see we used mine my, my, my one one. Yeah, I think three different ones of theirs. Yeah, we're sticking five. Uh, the sling, Slingerland, two love rigs. Yeah, no. This was one of the songs I was probably most excited about. 
as far as a chorus. It's probably one of my favorite songs that we've got going. Um, band just has a really good sense of melody, a good sense of connecting with an audience and making things relatable, not only on the lyrical side, but also from the melodic side. And this was a prime example, I think, of getting the opportunity to kind of push them a little bit vocally, so how we were stacking and the kinds of backgrounds you do and the accessory parts that we do behind stuff, octaves and um, things that you, you really want to think about when you're dialing in a recording. You have the opportunity to, so you get to take some risks there, and this is one of those that they get definitely paid off. I remember uh, Jason's two little girls walking around the basement singing "Hold Your Breath," and when David was recording vocals, and they would walk by, they would they would always just take a deep breath and hold it. So yeah, I think that'll be a good one. Breath, we're going under. Hold your breath. I'm starting to wonder. Hold your courage now, I can feel the shaking! Whole bunch of nothing. Whole bunch of nothing. Played ping pong for a while. Pool. Pool. Bit of a groove. Bit of a groove. How are you supposed to get any work done in a beautiful day like this? I mean, these days are just not supposed to be in the sky. It is really nice out. We're supposed to go get some barbecue and then uh, go get ice cream and Ooh. you know things like that on beautiful days like this. And then grill out, of course, for supper. Uh, guys, what about making a record? Have a bonfire later. Making a record. Can we make a rock record? One gotta, of these we days. We gotta keep things. Uh, keep the priorities in. Focusing life on the, yeah. on the good things. Maybe we'll go shooting later. Yeah. I've been doing this record with uh, Jason Rao in uh, Springfield, Tennessee. We just uh, taking a little rest to eat at the Woods Barbecue here. It's a little tasty, you know. Uh, but yeah, doing this record, it's been, it's been, you know, a little different than the other records we've done. Just the process of excuse me, laying down the tracks and doing drums last instead of first. It's been real laid back, just real, you know, except for when his girls gang up on me with the, in the tickle wars, then I, I lose. It's a little out of control, but a real groove that, we're, that we've kind of gotten in together as a, as a team. And, you know, it's really looking forward to the end product. game a feeble chance ought to throw and you can look to the future but it's inevitable they had a very cool backstory lyrically where it was coming from so uh, where the idea was birthed from was really it was something the band connected with it was something that they understood and something that they were really familiar with so to take that and be able to carry it over into a song is something that they would they would play live, put on a record, I think is really cool because that's, to me, is the most organic translation of what they are that they could possibly provide. So here I am, young and hopeful, staring at the vast unknown. This is good. Progress. Progress. What's your, what's your approach on percussion on this record? That's good. Can you get a little closer to the mic? Okay. Better? Much better. This is what we do in the studio. We come into the song, and then we got all the words, we just need an arrangement. So then the producer comes in and, okay, here's this great arrangement. But then none of the words work with the arrangement, so now I gotta write new words. That's how it works. Yeah, what she said. I'm gonna just chill. I'm just chill over here. We don't need another protest. We need right perspective. We got lost, but we're not broken. We need one objective. You're never too far if you don't stop moving. Yeah, this was one of the songs that I, I felt like coming into the studio we had pretty much down um, how we wanted it. 
the, the working title was always Tom Petty. We always felt like it sounded like a, something that Tom Petty would sing, even though we never really listened to Tom Petty. It just felt like uh, probably what Tom Petty would sound like. Uh, it has a momentum to it, I think, that really reminds me of some, some classic rock kind of stuff, stuff that I heard my dad playing on his record player. Rhythm section is so tight that it's a perfect opportunity with just such small instrumentation that we had the opportunity to build this kind of landscape of sound without adding billions upon billions of tracks and layering and this and that. It's pretty straightforward, but I really think that it holds that Americana meets rock and roll, open road sort of vibe. Definitely was really impressed um, with the lyrical content that David had written on this one. It's kind of a different vibe for us, more of a kind of a power ballad and just about the idea of, you know, in, uh, in your walk with the Lord, the only thing that will keep you from failing is if you consciously give up. As long as you continue to say, no, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep trying to give everything to the Lord and seek after Him and, and grow. And as long as you never give up on your restarts, you can't, you can't lose. But that's the key, is just understanding that and knowing that uh, you've got as many restarts as, as you want. But it's important that you consciously make those decisions. You know, whenever you fall or find yourself in a glit, you're just in the ditch or just in a in a in a rut. That's the word. You know, you, you uh, as long as you realize that, you know, just repent, get back on track. As long as you consistently do that, you'll you can't you can't lose. You don't win. We're at day two, the Children 19.3 record, which means it's two down, so we're that much closer to finishing up, which is good. It's because they, they're constantly bickering. Ever, you know, my idea's better, my idea's better. I play that better. I'm the better sibling. Mom loves me more. You know, worried about good tones, good grooves. It'll be over soon enough.